Hi, it's Liana Bolden with Eternally Speaking Now. I'm going to share something I wrote um, back when my son was 10. And uh, the title of it is The Pharisee Versus the Chair I See. <laughs> uh, okay, it starts with two verses. One is Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. Matthew 1, 23 also says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. So our son, Zachariah, as he was zooming through age 10 and dove into double digits, I had observed the beginning of that years-long transition from depending on his parents' relationship with Jesus to having his own personal relationship with the Lord. One tool the Lord gave me to help Zach develop his friendship with God is what I affectionately call pull up the chair. So anytime Zach would be frustrated, sad, or confused, or angry, we would just sit down, we'd pull up a chair, and we'd just talk to Jesus about it, as if the Lord himself was sitting right next to us. It's really a simple, tangible way to actively include God in our everyday situations, and it's something I do quite regularly myself. <laughs> but pulling up the chair isn't limited to emotional moments. We really just do it with any activity throughout the day. You know, whether we're doing school or eating a snack or finishing chores, playing a game, watching a movie, brushing our teeth or going to bed, I can remind my son and myself, each other, to pull up the chair and invite Jesus to walk, run, work, rest, cry, and laugh with us. Well, back then when I had shared this approach with my husband, he responded with a chuckle saying, Hey, Liana, that's good. Don't be a Pharisee. Pull up the chair, you see. <laughs> okay, beyond the silly rhyme, which I thought was quite clever, but this play on words presents a sobering lesson. Listen, we can know a lot about God, yet not allow him to know us. Follow me on this. There's a huge difference between the two. If we know a lot about God, that's a result of head knowledge. But if we allow him to know us, that comes from the heart in deep friendship. It requires us to talk with him. In the scriptures, the Pharisees, you can see they knew, they knew the word of God front to back. They actually developed an impressive religion in their day. But that's as far as it went. Jesus, the Messiah, about whom they'd read in the Old Testament, stood right in front of them and they didn't recognize him. They did not know him personally and they neglected to, quote, let him know them, right? Through close personal connection. Well, the Lord warns us of this in Matthew 7, verses 21 to 23. This is what it says. Jesus said this. He says it to you and me right now. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me, Jesus said, in that day, Lord, Lord, haven't we prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Yikes, that is scary. I don't want Jesus to look at me and say, I never knew you. Depart from me. This also begs the question, wait a second. If God is omniscient, which means he's all-knowing, <laughs> that it, when he is, then how can he say, I never knew you? Doesn't he know all? Well, I've got good news. <laughs> I found the answer by looking up the original Greek word for knew, the word know, in Matthew 7 that we just read, where he says, I never knew you. That word knew means, you ready? A knowledge grounded on personal experience. 
a knowledge grounded on personal experience. Further, I discovered that the Greek word for new in Matthew 7, that I just defined for you, is the same Greek word for know in Matthew 1, 24 to 25. Hang in there with me. Check this out. Listen to Matthew 1. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife, Mary, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Yes, that's what you think it is. That is some seriously intimate, personal, experiential knowledge. We're, we're talking about a husband knowing his wife in intimate oneness. That word, he did not know her till she brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus, is the same word no, where Jesus says, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Listen, if I understand all this accurately, the word no in both these verses, Matthew 7 and Matthew 1, that word no means inseparable, special oneness. It is an intimacy founded on trust and confidentiality in close, affectionate relationship. If God, who knows everything, doesn't know someone, it's because that person didn't let him know them in personally experienced relationship. They didn't pull up the chair and talk with him and share their heart with him and let him know their innermost thoughts in honest, real, transparent friendship. So I leave you with a challenge today. And I cry out, oh Lord God, may we all do what we need to do and not be a Pharisee. Pull up the chair that you see and invite Jesus to sit with you all day. Tell him your deepest feelings. Be real. Treat him like the most trustworthy friend you've ever had. He yearns for this. And you know, deep inside, we're all yearning for it too. Pull up a chair for him while you work. Play, read, talk, cook, and eat. <laughs> Pull up the chair during the movie, on your phone, and while you're at the computer. This is a visual reminder of what's already true. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And he delights in our sincere friendship with him. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. This is Jesus speaking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me.